there is an alternative form of Newton's second law of motion allowing us to reinterpret problems in dynamics as problems in statics. It is known as de Lambert's principle named after a French physicist and mathematician Jean de Ronde de Lambert. This principle can be formulated as follows. Let us start with Newton's second law of motion, where the fundamental equation of dynamics states that the mass m of a point mass times its acceleration a is equal to the vector sum f of the forces from f1 to f and acting on the point mass. In fact, the form of the fundamental equation includes the fourth law of motion, stating that force is a vector, that is the net force f of a system of forces acting on a body is given by their vector sum. The acceleration of a body is always measured with respect to a frame of reference, represented the reference point O here, where the position vector are pointing from the point O to the point like body describes the instantaneous position of the body. When we studied the laws of motion, we also considered situations where the acceleration of the point mass vanishes. The interpretation of such cases was that the point mass is at rest or in equilibrium if and only if the net force of all the forces acting on the point mass is zero, that is the forces acting on the point mass are balanced. If both the constrained and unconstrained forces acting on the point mass cancel each other out then the point mass remains at rest, provided its initial velocity with respect to the frame of reference is zero. In other words, the vector sum of the forces from F1 to Fn vanishes, that is the condition for the equilibrium of the mass point is the balance of the forces acting on it. Besides this condition of balance, there is another interpretation of the fundamental equation of dynamics which was introduced by de Lambert. We can write the fundamental equation in the form stating that the net force F acting on the mass point, plus the negative product of its mass M and its acceleration A vanishes, or F1 plus F2, plus ellipsis plus Fn plus the term minus M times A is equal to zero. The negative product of the mass of the point-like body and its acceleration with respect to an inertial frame can also be considered as force, or the force of inertia as de Lambert called it. Then the force of inertia or the inertial force F star is given by minus M times A, or minus M times the second order derivative of the position vector or of the point mass with respect to the time. This is a fictitious force, also called pseudo force since it is created by motion. We have to remember that the concept of force is introduced for the effects changing the state of motion of bodies, that is forces are the cause of motion and not the product of it. Then the fundamental equation written in the form stating the net force F acting on the point mass plus the inertial force F star produced by its acceleration vanishes, or F1, plus F2, plus ellipsis, plus Fn, plus F star is equal to zero. In this case, the net force F of the impressed forces and the inertial force F star defined by minus the mass M times the second order time derivative of the position vector or of the point mass are balanced, and the point mass is in equilibrium. This form of the fundamental equation has the following interpretation. Any problem in dynamics can be formally treated as a problem in statics, if we add the inertial force to the net force of the constrained and unconstrained forces acting on the point mass. In other words, dynamics is reduced to statics since we solve actual problems in dynamics by applying methods used in statics. Although there is nothing new in such a reinterpretation of the second law of motion, it had often proven useful. Because unknown forces acting on bodies are more easily determined in equilibrium, the force analysis in problems involving several bodies can usually be simplified by using inertial forces. The original interpretation of the fundamental equation involves the dynamic interpretation of the force causing the motion. From that viewpoint it makes no sense to talk about inertial force, since only the net force F acting on the point mass M produces its acceleration at A given by the force F divided by M, and there is no other force involved in this process. As mentioned before, force is the cause of acceleration and motion by definition. Now we can also talk about the static interpretation of force. The fundamental equation only states that the net force F acting on a point mass M is equal to the mass M times its acceleration A, but does not tell anything about the concrete causal relation between force and acceleration. Therefore, we can also apply the interpretation based on de Lambert principle, which is the static interpretation of force stating that forces acting on a point mass are always balanced. Since the forces include inertial force here, we cannot consider force as the cause of acceleration or motion. These two interpretations of force are based on the same law of motion described by the fundamental equation. Both of them can be applied, but not simultaneously. We have already stated that the Lambert principle can be useful from a practical point of view, since it helps us to simplify the force analysis in some problems. However, from theoretical point of view we can still ask why a moving point mass should be treated as if it were in equilibrium. Two answers can be given to this question. 
Firstly, motion is always relative, and the instantaneous position of a body is always determined with respect to a frame of reference. Then we can choose a frame of reference moving with the body, and observe the body in that system. The body remains at rest in the co-moving system, although the frame moving with a body accelerated by forces will not be an inertial frame. Secondly, the Lambert's principle focuses our attention on forces and not on the moving body, and the balance of a system of forces acting on a body can be treated without referring to the state of motion of the body on which they act. Let us consider some examples for the two different interpretations of force. In the first example we study the motion of a body accelerated in the vertical direction, where we exert a force F' prime on the body with the mass M, and the force is greater than the weight of the body given by the mass M times the gravitational acceleration G. Then the dynamic interpretation of force tells us that the net force acting on the body is equal to the vector sum of the force F' prime and the weight of the body given by the mass M times the gravitational acceleration G. As a result, the fundamental equation states that the acceleration A of the body is equal to the sum of F' prime and M times G, divided by M. Here the magnitude of the acceleration A pointing upward is given by the magnitude of F' prime minus M times the magnitude of G, divided by M. The static interpretation of force tells us that the force F', prime, the weight M times G of the body, and the inertial force minus M times A are balanced, that is their vector sum vanishes. This equation also leads to the equation shown in the dynamic interpretation of force. The second example is uniform circular motion, where a body with a mass M is attached to a string and whirled in a circle with the radius R by hand at a constant angular velocity omega. Following the dynamic interpretation of force, we can say that a force F' prime is exerted on the body by our hand through the string. This force produces the centripetal acceleration A given by minus the square of the angular velocity omega times the position vector or pointing from the center of the circle to the body. Then the fundamental equation of dynamics states that minus the mass M of the body times the square of the angular velocity omega times the position vector R is equal to F'. Prime. However, the static interpretation of force states that force F' prime and the inertial force minus M times A, or M times omega squared times R are balanced, that is their vector sum vanishes. Since the acceleration A is given by minus omega squared times the position vector R, this is the same equation as the one derived in the dynamic interpretation. The inertial force M times omega squared times R acting on the body has only meaning in the static interpretation. This force points from the center of the circle, and is called centrifugal force.